All right, it looks like we're recording. So welcome everyone tonight. Uh, good evening, hope you're doing well. As of right now, we have 84, even more keep coming into our session tonight. Uh, so welcome, glad to have you. We, uh, you will be muted for tonight's session, so don't worry about anything with unmuting yourself or having us accidentally hear you. But as always, if you can share your camera, that's great. We'll take a photo later in the session like we normally do if you haven't been here before, um, but welcome if you're new. Um, and so our chat tonight as well is turned off for the group chat. So if you have any questions at any time for our presenters, if there's a certain spot you'd like, to, I'd like them to show you, or if you have any questions pertaining to our residence halls, you can send those questions in directly to me um, and I'll be able to ask them in the, uh, ask the presenters. Um, and so today's session, I believe is our sixth virtual orientation session entitled Lay of the Land. It is a virtual residence hall tour. Um, we're very glad to have many staff members, pretty much the entire Residence Life staff right now, who is in strategic locations across campus, um, ready to show you uh, specific residence hall locations and have a good time and answer your questions. So I am gonna go ahead and get started and turn everything over to Corey. Hello, everyone. Uh, Matt, you can hear me? Uh, I'm coming yep. in loud and clear. All right. You're good. Hello and welcome. I'm Corey Campbell. I'm the Director of Residence Life here at Seton Hill. Very excited to have you joining us for our virtual residence hall tour. I have a team of my Residence Life staff who are all around campus. We're going to be jumping back and forth, showing you rooms, common spaces, laundry facilities, and other things around campus here. So we did a trial run today. Everything worked out pretty well. Uh, I do want to let you know we're literally going to be running up and down stairs uh, in the minutes we're switching between us. So um, if someone is a moment late or, or there's some little hiccups, please forgive us. We're, we're doing something pretty ambitious here. Right now, I just want to show you I'm coming to you from outside of our offices in Mara Hall. Right here is Mara 223. Um, this is Miss Judy, who you, you can always find to help you if you need some assistance as well as my office and right here in low hall will be the rest of our offices. I want to quickly have my team introduce themselves. So I'm going to ask uh, our assistant director, Bethany. Bethany, you want to jump on real quick? Hi, everybody. My name is Bethany Gary and I am the assistant director of Residence Life and we're so happy to have you on our tour tonight. Okay, and how about Shawnice? Shawnice, you wanna jump in real quick? Hi everybody, my name is Shawnice Johnson and I'm the area coordinator for Residence Life and I look forward to seeing you all on campus in August. And I will jump to Shamika. Hi everybody, my name is Shamika. I'm the resident director over in Maine Complex. I'm a grad student at, at Seen Hill and I'm studying to get my master's in business administration. Next, we'll jump over to Amanda. Hi y'all, uh, my name's Amanda. I oversee, I'm the residence director for Farrell, DeChantel and Sisters of Charity. I am a grad student as well. I'm studying to get my uh, master's in higher education and student affairs, but I'm actually getting my master's at a different school. So I'm excited to meet you all and have a good school year. Back to you, Corey. Thanks everyone. Oh, my camera's backwards. Thanks everyone, um, and if you're paying attention or you saw the videos there, we've all got our masks on as we wander around campus. Amanda actually just started at Seton Hill last week, so she's also uh, joining us from home in the comfort of her own living room. So uh, we, we've got our masks on and we're, we're ready to move around campus. Uh, if you have not yet seen your housing assignment for the fall semester, that should be available for you in residence. Um, if you log in on your home screen, it will have your room and roommate information. You may see that your housing assignment is currently waitlist. If your housing assignment is waitlist, that almost always means that we're still waiting on you to finish your housing application. So if you log in and see that, check the status of your application and email us if you have any questions. Um, I also want to let you know that we're going to have some additional things when you report to campus this year. There's going to be uh, an addendum to the housing contract that you've already gotten. We're gonna make uh, some slight policy alterations, like uh, we're not gonna have any overnight guests on campus for the fall semester. Um, we're going to uh, change the occupancy for 
a lot of our common spaces in the residence halls and just a few other tweaks. So you should expect to see that when you get to campus. Also wanna let you know that we have uh, developed and will help you facilitate a roommate agreement. So one of the things that you guys should do is work collaboratively to define how you want your room to work and what rules you'll have. So we've even addressed and added things like, are we gonna wear masks in the room? If another student comes over, um, will we wear masks around them? We want you guys to start thinking about those and help to facilitate that. So that's all gonna be there. And we just today got an entire list of cleaning uh, supplies that we're recommending everyone bring as they report to campus. Matt is going to um, add that right now. Yeah, coming up. Um, so as you can see, uh, several face masks. So you always have a spare thermometer, disinfecting wipes, cleaning supplies, soap, hand sanitizer, paper towels, laundry detergent, towels and linens, bottled waters, non-perishable foods, and all your over-the-counter medications. Those are all things that you should be preparing and expecting to bring to campus with you. Um, whenever we get to the end today, I'm gonna have Matt put this slide back up and leave it. So uh, if you wanna take a screenshot right now, please do. Otherwise, um, we'll revisit in just uh, the end of this session here tonight. And I think that's all I have from right now. I will be back with you guys in a few minutes where I'll be four floors up from where I am now uh, to take you through Mara Hall. But to get started, we're going to check in with Shawnice, who's in Brownlee Hall. All right, everybody. So I'm currently standing in Brownlee Hall. This is one of the double occupancy rooms. Furniture in this room includes two desks with chairs, which are right in front of me, um, two beds with mattresses, one on each side, um, two closets on each side, two, two, two dressers and one shelf as well. Um, and each floor in Brownlee comes with three REs as well, which oversee each floor community. And now I'm going to go to Shamika, who is in Haiti. Hi everyone, welcome to Haiti Hall. This is a typical room that you'd see in Haiti. So you walk in the door, you have a desk, you have two um, beds, sorry. And then you have your dresser set along with the sink that's all attached onto the wall. You can obviously at your discretion rearrange these as you want and you have a bookshelf over there. And next I'm gonna take you guys over to the bathroom. All of these floors are gendered because they're communal bathrooms. So if you come in here, this is like the toilet area and it has a sink in this area. Then next door to it, you'd actually find your showers. So we do have the stall showers. I'll turn on the lights so you can see it a bit better. We have the stall showers, and then there is like a bath shower as well. And each of these showers, they're locked with keys. So obviously during the year, you need to bring your key to get in. So it's all safe and secure. Next, I'll throw it over to Bethany over in Deshanto Hall. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Deshanto Hall. I'm going to go ahead and change my camera around here. Um, some of our first year students will be living in Deshanto Hall if you are a part of the honors program. So just want to show you what a room here in Deshanto looks like. They're a little bit different style than we just saw in Brownlee and Haiti. Here in Deshano, we have suite style rooms. Um, so here when you first come in, you can see there is a common area that has some lounge furniture. Um, then as you move over here, we'll go into the individual bedrooms. Um, each of the suites houses six people. So some of the rooms will be single rooms like this one, uh, where there's one set of furniture, a bed, a desk, a dresser, and an armoire. And some of the rooms will be double rooms. Um, this one has two singles and two doubles. So this one here is set up as a double room. So you can see there are two beds, two desks, and two dressers and two armoires. And we are gonna recommend when you are setting up your rooms when you move in, that you will keep social distancing in mind when you're setting up your space. Um, so try to keep um, the beds as separated as possible. Um, in these suites here in Deshantel, there is a bathroom in each suite. And so each suite has two sinks with some storage space below. Um, there's a separate closet here where the commode is located. And then also a separate room for the shower and then some storage space there for toiletries. All right, I'm gonna send it back to Corey 
So he's going to show you Mara. And I'm going to hop in for one second and say, Shawnice, whenever we get back to Brownlee, if there's a chance to show a bathroom, we have a request for a Brownlee bathroom. But I will yes, turn it over to Corey from Mara. Oh, all right. I, I just got up the stairs here. So let me uh, flip my camera around and we're going to go exploring in Mara. All of these rooms in Mara Hall are a little bit different. Um, they typically range anywhere from one to four people per bedroom. For this semester, all of these rooms will have two or less people. Uh, so those triples and quads will still only be two people, but you might have some extra furniture in your room. The one we're gonna see right now we're just entering is a designed two person double room. So you will see that we have our desk and desk chair uh, the adjustable bed frame and the twin XL mattresses, our second desk. We have two dressers right here. Mara Hall also has uh, built-in medicine cabinets. So you have uh, a little mirror there with some storage space, as well as these awesome, uh, really big closets. You see some shelves in there. Uh, I, I don't have a flashlight on. You can see there's lots of overhead storage space too. Um, so this is one example for a room in Mara Hall. They're all going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to take you across the hall and we're going to see another example of a two person room. I think we've definitely seen, like you mentioned in your previous sessions, Corey, having a small step stool is helpful. There's a lot of overhead space, like we saw in Havy and Brownlee as well, that a step stool can be useful. Yes, Matt, that, that is correct. So here we're in another two person room. You can see that this one is set up and shaped a little bit differently. We still have uh, the beds, the desks, the furniture. Um, also, I mentioned that these mattresses are fully adjustable. So one of the things you will know, this one is raised all the way up. Um, that's quite high. It's almost hip high on me. And then you can see an example of one lowered. It's going to be very easy to get into, but it doesn't give you nearly the same underbed storage. Another thing I would point out in Mara Hall, all the other buildings come equipped with curtains. Mara Hall does not have curtains, but it does have these beautiful classic wood shutters and stood on all the rooms. So you can black out your room if you want to, or if you would prefer, you can have a, a bird's eye view of our campus and Greensburg community. Uh, one last thing while we're upstairs, I just want to pop across the hall and we will facilities. Uh, right here, I'm now entering the shower room for Mara. This shower room has comes with an individual closing door. So we, we can... lost you there for a second, Corey. I don't know if anyone else did, but we lost you at the very beginning when you locked, walked into the bathroom, if there was anything okay. you said. Okay, I'll recap real quick. There are five shower stalls, and if you missed it, every one of these has a, a door that closes individually. So these are all private shower stalls for just the females on this fourth and fifth floor of Mara. Each floor has its own bathroom facility. And then we're just gonna cross the hall for a moment. And um, you will see the other uh, bathroom facility spaces here. We have six uh, hand sinks as well as an additional one here, a hair washing sink. And as we go into the other side of this re restroom facility, we have five uh, bathroom stalls and each floor in Mara Hall also has a laundry facility on the floor. All of our laundry facilities for the year are free. So you don't need to bring money or have a laundry card. Just press the button and the machine will start up and you'll have your free laundry cycle. I left my script laying in one of the rooms. Well, Corey, this, I'll take a second too to see if we have some questions that have been coming through. Are there other style rooms on Mara outside of those two styles that you showed? Someone mentioned like the 01 room that they might be living in, if that's a different style of the room than we've seen already in Mara? Yeah, Matt, every one of them is a little different. I don't know if that's 401 or 501. Um, it particularly is, asked about 401. So I know you're on the fifth floor. 
Oh no, I'm actually on the fourth floor. So give me, oh, you give are, me okay. one second. Uh, I'm trying we, to find. We also mentioned uh, whenever we showed the Havy room, it looked like there was only one desk, but Havy does have two desks per room. So every student has that desk. We've had a question to clarify air conditioning. And so as of right now, the Chantal Hall does have air conditioning, but Brownlee, Havy, and Mara do not have air conditioning. So that's where we recommend having uh, box fans that you can put into your window or some type of oscillating fan for your rooms in, in Mara, Brownlee, and Havy. Matt, uh, I'm actually in here. I just got to 401 um, and, and I apologize. I'm just gonna do a little bit of rearranging. We, we had some things moved while uh, custodial and maintenance were in here doing their things. Um, this room is a little bit different. This is the only one that doesn't have the dressers in it, uh, but it actually has a little bit bigger closets. You still have the two beds, the medicine cabinet, the built-in shelving, two desks, um, the windows and, and the shutters here, a nice view of the Boyle building and, and these closets. Um, when I tell you that they're enormous, uh, I mean, I can reach all the way up and not even get close to touching the, the top of these closets. So you've got lots of storage space there. There's also a little cubby area here right behind the door that gives you some additional storage space. So um, this is actually Mara 401 I'm in right now. Perfect. Let me catch up and see if we can have a few more. Um, they did, we did clarify right now at the moment we are using the Wi-Fi within the residence hall to show the rooms. Um, as you can see, there are hanger rods in the closets in Mara Hall. Um, we will make sure at a later point in time, uh, we will show you the kitchen facility and the laundry facility for uh, DeChantel Hall at a later point in time. Uh, Havy Hall, we will also be showing you the laundry room. Uh, does Havy have closets? Um, and so Havy's, can you explain Havy's setup for the closets? I know we saw that room previously. Yeah, so Havy does have some building closets. Um, it, it's one closet with two doors and a divider down the middle. Typically, um, one student will take one half and the other student will take the other half. And those are equipped in each room. And I, I will ask uh, Shamika if you're handy or perhaps you can run up uh, after we do the laundry rooms, we'll get a quick shot of those closets. Um, the beds, you, do those beds bunk? Are we allowed to bunk our beds? Um, typically, we, we do have bunk beds. Um, for this semester, just to try to keep uh, things distanced a little more, we are going to ask that people keep their beds spread out, out um, uh, like, uh, like I had in this room with, with a bed on either side of the room. There are multiple outlets. We had a question about outlets in the rooms, and so our, our rooms do have multiple outlets. Yeah, all the, all the rooms will have multiple outlets, um, it, at least three. So uh, I'm gonna track right, right here. We've got some in, in Mara Hall, the other one's behind the, the desk. I don't know if we can see it because of the chair. Um, and then uh, uh, another one over here. So all of our rooms do have at least three outlets laid out around them. And while Ma Mara has different setups of halls, Brownlee Hall, all the rooms look um, near identical, as well as Havy, it just might be flopped. Um, we had a question, we will show you the Havy kitchen at a later point in time. The kitchen is uh, on the bottom floor in Havy, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, I'm back over in Havy, I can show um, the closets. I know there were questions about it. All right, I'll highlight you there, Shamika, thank you. No problem. So I showed you the sink and it has like the drawer spacings. And then to the side, Wrong side. <laughs> to this side, they have the closet, so you just open them up. And you have one on each side, so each resident has their own. And the missing desk was behind the, um, what's it called, the bed here. The missing desk was over here. There we go. Uh, to answer another question about kitchen facilities, and so you will see the, co the uh, communal kitchen facility for Havy. Um, that is one in the bottom floor of Havy. There are kitchen facilities on each floor in Brownlee, and so we will show you those. Um, catching up on some of the questions, if I can take a second here, because I think Shawnice is still coming up for Brownlee. Um, you are getting, this is specifically for the residence halls today. 
Um, however, our next virtual tour that will happen on the 27th, we will try to show you as many of the other facilities as we can. We might not be able to get, we had a question about specific science and math labs. We most likely will not be able to get into specific rooms um, in other buildings, but we will show you general areas. What I will also say is when you come to campus, um, during Welcome Weekend is where our orientation leaders will take you on tours as well. All right, and so I think we're caught up for the moment. I'll catch back up with the chat, but it looks like is it time for Shawnice and Brownlee? Yes, so I am right. currently in Brownlee's commuter bathroom. So there are three floors in Brownlee and two commuter bathrooms on each side. So as you can see, there are a number of sinks here with two large mirrors. Um, I'm coming down here to some restroom stalls, and there's also showers on each side as well. And walking through here, it is identical on the other side. So um, two bathroom stalls, a shower there, and also a shower right here. So now I am going to take you to Brownlee's lounge area. There's a lounge area on each of the floors. This is currently what the lounge area looks like. So as you can see, it's some seating area, a table, and it's a TV. We also have some workstations on each side. So you can watch um, TV here or put your computer here. And there is also a small kitchenette located on each floor. So this is our community fridge. And this is our small kitchenette where you can come and cook here and hang out with friends. And there's also a seating area along with a microwave toaster as well. So now I will turn it over to Shamika in Haiti. Hi everyone, welcome back to Haiti. So this is the laundry room slash your lounge. So as you can see when you enter, you have three showers and like, I mean three washers, sorry. And like Corey mentioned before, all of our washing and drying is free. And that you is for every building on campus. We had a question, it was only for particular buildings. It is for every laundry facility on campus, it is free. Yes, and we do have a pool table here for you guys. During the year, there's like the pool sticks and all that stuff, but it's been put away for the time being. And then over here is the lounging area. So you do have a desk where you can work, study, whatever you please. And then there's a little sit down and kind of relax area. Now due to COVID regulations, there are obviously gonna be um, max capacities for these spaces and the seatings may look different. So do not, quote the way it's set up right now as it could potentially change. We do have a ironing board here for you guys to use. So if you do need to iron your clothes, there's two ironing boards down here, along with the vending machine. And then to the other side of the room is where we have your little kitchenette area. So we have a stove here for you with a fridge, and this is a community fridge. So you can put your stuff in there, just make sure you label it. And then we have a sink for you. And obviously just be mindful and clean up after yourself when you use these spaces. Now I'm going to throw you guys over to Bethany over in Deshano. I'm going to keep it here for one second if I can interrupt before we get to Bethany. To clarify as well, someone asked about microwaves and refrigerators. Microwaves are provided within the residence halls, and so you do not want to purchase a microwave for your individual room. Um, however, you can purchase a refrigerator. Corey, can you remind us on the, uh, or someone, the capacity size that we're looking for with a refrigerator in our rooms? Hi, Matt. Yeah, um, you can bring a mini fridge with you, uh, 2.7 cubic feet or smaller. Um, and those are the ones that you should be like finding easily in any store this time of year, as well as the, the microwaves um, are not permitted in Brownlee, Havy, or Mara Hall. Um, those students who are in that Deshaunel facility can have one microwave in the suite in the common area. So um, I, I think there's only like 24 students that that applies to, but um, those students in Deshaunel, they can have the microwave. I'll stick with you for a second, Corey. Uh, flooring in the residence hall rooms. All of our residence hall rooms, well, well Mara, Avey, and Bradley, they do not have carpeting in the rooms, correct? That is correct. Uh, Mara has a wooden floor, Brownlee and Havy have tile floors, and Deshauna will have a carpeted floor. Um, and then there is a location, I believe, where we have dimensions. Uh, is there a way that people can find out the dimensions for the closets or the residence halls online? Yeah, uh, the dimensions for most of our spaces and everything in them is at seatonhill.edu slash housing and dining slash residence halls. And I can make sure that we can get that here to, as well to send out to everyone who is in this session as well. Um, 
so that's where we can answer those questions. The laundry for Havy Hall is in the basement floor of Havy that we had that question. Um, so someone mentioned that they already have a 4.7 cubic mini fridge. That is too large, correct, Corey? Correct. It, it draws a higher amperage, and um, in these buildings, we, we just don't have enough electricity to support the, those larger refrigerators. And then, yes, we had a question about microwaves on the floor. There is a microwave on each floor in Havy and Brownlee and Mar as well. Correct, Corey? That is correct. Okay. And now we can turn it over to Bethany. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Deschantel. I am here to show you um, some of the more common areas here in Deschantel. So let me flip my camera around. Um, I'm on the second floor of Deschantel right now, and I'm showing you our common lounge space. As you can see, there's some tables and chairs here for doing some studying if you need to get out of your room for a little while. Um, here we have a ping pong and pool table. And we do have a lounge space over here, but like Shamika said, that may look a little bit different um, when you arrive here in the fall. There's a vending machine here on the second floor as well, and a TV. Uh, we're going to head into the kitchenette here. You can see that we have um, a kitchen facility. This is once again on the second floor of Deschantel with a stove, a sink, microwave, and a communal refrigerator. Um, you will want to bring all of your own kitchen supplies. If you like to cook and you want, are planning to cook, um, we do not provide pots and pans or anything like that, so make sure you bring your own supplies. And then we're going to be heading over here to the laundry room that's also on the second floor for Deschantel. And you can see our laundry facility here. We have four washers and four dryers. And like in every other building, these are free for students. And then the second vending machine is here in the laundry room. And I'm gonna send it over to Shawnice now to show some more community space in Brownlee. Hi everybody, so I'm located now in what's called the Brownlee Bug. So this is one of our basement areas in which it is also a large lounge area where residents can come and hang out. So as you can see, we have several seating areas down here with tables and chairs. Um, there's also a printer down here, so if you ever need to print your work. There is also a pool table as well down here, and there's mailboxes as well. And around here, similar to the lounge areas up on first, second, and third floor, there's also a kitchenette area as well. And then coming around here, we're still working on it, but there's also several tables for residents to sit at. And also, as we said before, there's also going to be occupancy limits on the lounge areas as well. So that information will be coming soon. Um, and now I will go back to Corey. Sean Meese, I was hoping after we are done with Corey, if you'd have the chance to be able to show the laundry facility for Brownlee, we had a request. Corey, um, I'll yeah. turn it over to you. Yeah, Sean Meese, if you want to go uh, upstairs in uh, I know that the was laundry room, floor. and uh, I'll throw it back to you. Uh, where I'm at right now, guys, I realized that I did not get you into the kitchen for Mara Hall. I'm just going to turn the corner real quick and show you we do have a similar kitchen facility here with that communal fridge, Keurig, microwave, a dish sink, a small stove, um, a little uh, kitchen table here, and the toaster. Also on the shelf, uh, we were just scrubbing the floors, so... Uh, we have our ironing board and iron that those are available to all of our residents here in Mara as well. And um, actually, uh, Shawnice, if you're ready, uh, why don't you go ahead and jump in with the laundry area in Brownlee? Hi, everyone. So I'm currently now on first floor Brownlee. So this is our laundry area. There's only one in this building. I mean, as you can see on this side, we have several washers um, and a sink. And we also have some dryers on this side. And if you walk out here, similar to second floor, there is also a lounge area as well and a kitchenette. So set up similar to second floor. And now I will go back to Corey. Uh Thanks for uh, going up and getting that laundry room, Shawnice. Um, at this time, that, that's all the planned exploration we had. I want to uh, thank my staff who got plenty of steps in tonight, running back and forth to get all these videos. Um, I also want to thank everyone for watching at home. 
I hope that no one gets motion sick. Uh, they were some pretty shaky videos, but um, we're doing our best to, to show you around campus and, and get into these spaces so that you can really explore where you're gonna be living whenever you get to Seton Hill in the fall. So uh, Matt, if you have other questions. I do, um, and this is great Q&A time with Corey. Um, can you talk about the pot and pans? Um, do residence halls have them? Should students bring them? How do we take care if we want to cook in any of the kitchens in the residence halls? Yeah, Bethany uh, had just mentioned that, but we're not going to provide any pots and pans and cookware. So if you plan to cook uh, or, or, you know, bake some cookies, do some things, uh, plan to bring your own, especially um, with a public health crisis, you're going to want to have your own set that you can clean and bring back to your room and store. Printing. Are there printing facilities in all of the residence halls? I know we saw a printer in the Brownlee basement. Are there other printers in the residence halls? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Havy has one on the first floor. Brownlee has one in the basement. Deshano has one on the first floor. And because Mara is connected to the main admin building, there's like six or eight throughout the building here. So no matter where you are, don't worry about bringing a printer. You're always pretty close to a wireless printer on campus here. Can you talk about other appliances such as toasters, coffee makers, um, what's provided, what should be brought? Um, again, knowing that sometimes there's a difference between DeShanto Hall because of the suite versus the other residence halls? Yeah, so um, the toasters and even Keurigs are provided in um, all these halls. So uh, don't bring those. Uh, again, it's extra electricity and it's a fire hazard. In DeShanto Hall, I mentioned you can bring the microwave um, if you want a Keurig in that area, you could also bring one of those. But things like toasters and toaster ovens, um, those are fire hazards and those are still going to be prohibited in those spaces. There, uh, can you talk about mail? Mail in all of the facilities? Where would you get your mail? Yes, each facility has its own mail area and that will get you letters in smaller mail. If you get large parcels and packages, those will be held in uh, the admin building down in the mail room, and you'll get an email that says that something came in and that you need to come down and pick it up. Can you talk about the bathrooms for DeShanto Hall, uh, what's provided and what should be brought from for the residents? We don't enter the spaces once the, the residents are living there. So you will need to provide your own cleaning supplies, your own toilet paper, your own toiletries, um, the only thing that we're going to provide in there is the shower curtain for the bathroom. Um, in terms of then, uh, like you, I think you've already mentioned, but just to clarify, in terms of cleaning rooms, so not just the Chantel, but whether you have a room in Brownlee, Havy, or Mara, if you want to have any type of broom or mop or Swiffer, is there anything that's provided for a floor or anything that should be brought for cleaning your own individual room? We will provide a vacuum. But um, if you do want a, a broom or a Swiffer or other cleaning supplies for your own space, um, I encourage you to bring those. All the common spaces will be cleaned twice daily. Um, and then to clarify, there was a question about what floors might be co-ed. Um, could you, ex can you talk about the different uh, co-ed levels in, within the residence halls? So none of them are co-ed as in shared bathrooms. Um, in Mara Hall, that's gonna be all females. In Havy Hall, first floor is female, second floor is male, the third floor is female. In Brownlee Hall, the first floor is male and the second floor is female. On the third floor of Brownlee Hall, there are two independent wings with separate bathrooms that are keyed separately. So the north end of Brownlee Hall will be male students and they will have keys that only open their male bathroom on that north end. On the south end of the third floor of Brownlee Hall, there will be some female students. The females have a, a separate key that only unlocks the female bathroom on that south end of the building. So uh, can you talk a little bit about the time frame and the process for move-in? We had a question about how much time and any other logistics for move-in. Are we able to answer those questions? Yeah, so uh, we're gonna share some more information tomorrow about what to expect for move-in. Um, we're looking at probably an hour window for everyone. Uh, we're gonna ask you to show up in and, and get the things moved into your room. At the end of the hour, if, if uh, your, your family, you wanna go out to eat or go out to Walmart and get some things and bring back, you're welcome to do that. We're just asking that you get uh, 
all of your things unloaded and kind of into the room so that you're not going to be in the hallways um, and, and crossing over other people and, and providing additional exposures in that move in process. Um, students are allowed to do laundry in different areas. There was a question, uh, I guess someone must have missed. There are laundry facilities in Havey. Um, and so you should be able to do laundry in all of your individual buildings and not have to carry your laundry to a different building. Um, but I don't necessarily think there's any restrictions um, with the exception of uh, uh, abiding by the guest host policy with visiting a different residence hall. Correct, correct. All of our halls do have laundry. Um, if yours are taken and you have a friend in another hall that wants to invite you over and you throw a load of laundry in, that's acceptable. Um, in regards to the Keurigs, we provide the Keurigs, but we do not provide the K-Cups. Um, and so if you have particular flavors or things that you would like for your communal Keurig, you can bring those. But also remember that within that, we also, uh, with your meal plan, will be provided the uh, beverages within the dining hall as well. Corey, do you have any things off the top of your head? I don't know if it's online or in your head in, in regards to um, shower numbers within the residence halls and the floors. So uh, shower numbers in Brownlee Hall, that's going to be eight per floor, uh, four in the south end, four on the north end. In Havy Hall, I believe it's five per floor. And in Mara Hall, that was going to be, I think I counted five when I went in there. So um, eight in Brownlee, five in Mara, and five in Havy. Water fountains on each floor within the residence halls? Water fountains are going to be closed for the fall semester just as uh, they're a community risk. Um, in, in future semesters, yes, e each building has a water fountain, but those are gonna be covered and uh, use is not gonna be permitted for this fall semester. We had a question about small shake maker um, in regards to bringing additional uh, appliances for the residence halls for cooking or, or shake makers. Yeah, so if you do have something like that that, that supports a special diet that you have, um, you are allowed to bring it. What we're going to ask is that you don't use it or plug it in in your room. And every morning, uh, whenever you get up, if you wanna make your shake, go ahead and take that out to the communal kitchen um, make your shake there, go ahead and clean it up, and then take it back to your room. Question, there is an ATM campus, uh, an ATM on campus. Corey, do you remember what bank the ATM is? Uh, First Commonwealth. First Commonwealth, and I'm like 75% sure of that. <laughs> let, me, let me see, uh, is anyone else in main complex that can check out the, the ATM downstairs? Yeah, there's one near the, the mail room in main complex. Um, how many rooms, uh, particularly in Havy? Havy is, oh boy. I think there are 18 per floor. Um, anything provided in the bathrooms. And so what's provided in the bathrooms is the uh, toilet paper within the common rooms. Uh, or like for, again, the public restrooms, there are toilet paper provided for those. Yeah, um, the toilet paper, paper towels, hand soap, anywhere where we have a community bathroom that you're going to share, we will provide those items. Is anyone still in Brownlee for a view of the bathrooms in Brownlee? I guess it was a little bit difficult to see. We have a request. Um, yes, I'm currently in that building. I can go upstairs and show one. Okay. Corey, can you talk about um, residents visiting residents? Because we mentioned um, if you're going to go do laundry in a different building, having to take care of being a guest and a host in a residence hall. Would you mind talking a little bit about um, visiting different residence halls? Yeah, so, so resident students are going to be allowed to visit other students, uh, even in other halls this semester. Um, some of the things that we are going to have, you're still considered a guest. So um, between the hours of 9 p.m. and midnight, you're going to have to be signed in. And um, while you're over there, if you're in a friend's room, the occupancy uh, limit on all those rooms. So for all of our double rooms in Brownlee and Havy Hall, a maximum of four people can be in there at any time. So if you want to go over and visit a friend, that's fine. If five of you want to go visit a friend, um, you're going to have to find a space outside that will accommodate a group of that size. Um, uh, Bethany, was there anything else you want to add to the guests and visitations? Um. 
you'll just need to make sure if you're ever visiting a hall or if you are hosting someone that you'll need to be with them at all times. Um, if you are hosting a guest, you are considered responsible for them. So you'll just need to make sure that you are with them anytime you're going throughout the building. Um, and we are going to ask that anytime you are in a common area that you are wearing a mask. Um, if you are in your own personal bedroom, it is okay to take your mask off. Um, but you will need to discuss with your roommate whether you're going to require any guests that come to your room to wear masks. Um, iced tea makers in the residence halls, is that something that would be permitted, Corey? Yeah, those would be the same as, as the, uh, the small blender shake makers. Um, you could bring it. Um, we would just ask that you could store it in your room whenever you want to make a pitcher of iced tea. Come on out to the kitchen area, plug it in, brew your tea, and then take it in and put it in your fridge. I had a question about um, the dining hall and I don't think at this moment we have the ability to necessarily speak to the dining hall in terms of hours. Um, I don't anticipate the hours shortening to, to be honest with you, um, but that is something that I don't think we have the ability to speak to as of this moment in regards to the dining halls. I know that they are working diligently to make sure that they will accommodate everyone. Um, and so that, that was something there as well as we also have um, the Cove in Sullivan Hall. Uh, mini fridges, do we find that mini fridge fit under the bed if someone puts their bed on the high part of the um, end bars there, Corey? Oh yeah, actually, let, let me uh, go take you back in here. So those uh, beds, whenever you move them up in their adjustments, they actually have about 30 inches underneath them, which is a lot of space. So um, here is one of the beds, turn the lights on for you. Here's one of the beds adjusted all the way up. And for example, there's a full-size desk chair underneath it. So these have, you can see even the, the top surface of the desk is underneath that bed. So this is a lot of room underneath these when you raise them up. Is there any uh, list that we've been talking about certain kitchen appliances with being able to bring them and take them into the kitchen facility to use? Are there certain kitchen appliances that we should know not to bring at all into the residence halls? So any, any uh, cooking appliances that have a, a, a heating element that, that's going to get red um, and kind of out in the open. So like the toasters, toaster ovens, um, even like George Foreman grills and things ask you to leave at home. But um, the, the smaller items, the things like blenders, the things that really don't have heating elements, um, your iced tea makers, um, go ahead and bring those and we're just going to require that you use them in the common space. Another pop quiz for your Corey, number of rooms per floor in Brownlee. We're testing 30. you today. 30, 30. there we go. Um, now you talked about the water fountains not being in use. Do they have the water bottle filling ability for any of those? So if someone wants to bring water bottles to fill up. Yes, so water bottle, the filling stations will still be operable. Not every single one of the water fountains has one of those water bottle filling stations but you're never very far away from one. So um, up here in Mara, for example, it doesn't have the water bottle filling station, but as you head downstairs, like if you're on your way to the dining hall, you'll pass one uh, right at the intersection of Mara and Admin. Can you talk about the public space in Mara? And so we didn't necessarily see a specific lounge like in Brainley or Havy, but how does sort of, sort of public communal space work in Mara? So um, right now uh, we, we have, um, uh, some very large open hallways um, and, and a little bench here in that kitchen area I showed you. For this semester, we're not anticipating having a dedicated lounge space on this floor in Mara. Depending on our occupancy where we're open, that may change, but right now um, we're going to need to have all rooms online as bedrooms, especially because we're going to be using those four person and three person rooms with only two people. Um, it, we're just going to have to spread out and, and use the spaces that we always uh, like to use as common areas when we're able. Do we have any specifications in regards to TVs when those are brought into the residence halls? No, TVs, um, even the large TVs, th those LCD and LED ones, um, they, they really have relatively low power consumption. So those aren't a concern if you um, want to give up the space in your room to bring some 50-inch uh, TV in and, and really enjoy that, then 
um, you're more than welcome to. Um, really, because our students have the MacBooks in their phones, um, watching movies, watching TVs, most of that occurs on the technology that they're already carrying around. So unless you're someone that really specifically wants a TV for gaming or something else, um, I would really encourage you before you buy one to come to campus and try it out and see if you would miss not having it. Sean East, is there a chance for that Brownlee bathroom? Yes, I'm currently up here now, I can show it. Thank you, I'll turn it over to you. Spotlight video. There you go, Shanice. Sorry, I'm trying to get the video back on. It's it. Uh, at least I can see it for now. Okay. Sorry, everybody. I'm sorry about that last video. I'm currently right now in Bradley bathrooms. So as Corey said, on the east and west side, there's commuter bathrooms. So as you can see, I'm walking down here. There are several sinks. It's identical to the one I just showed you before. There are two dispensers on each side and two large mirrors on the front and back of me. Um, I'm going to walk down the short hallway right here. And there are currently three bathrooms right here. And this one has a shower in it as well. And then coming back here is also one of the large showers. So there's a small sink here as well and a railing. And on the opposite side, it is also identical as well. So as I'm walking around here, so there's two restroom areas, one with the shower as well, like the other side, and then also another shower right here at the end. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got a few more questions if we can. We'll see if we can work through. Um, the beds are adjustable. Every bed on campus is adjustable, correct, Corey? That is correct. Um, all the beds, um, sometimes they're, they're a little bit tight as they just uh, tension together. Um, sometimes we might need a little. Uh, mallet to, to free those up for you, but they're all adjustable and really easy to just snap into place. Mini fridges, is that typically one per person or one per room? Typically one per room is more than enough. Um, it, and it, it depends if you have a special dietary restriction or, or medication needs refrigerated. Um, but many college students uh, we find aren't typically shopping for a lot of groceries week to week right now. Um, and as we have an all-you-can-eat dining hall just right downstairs, many of them at any given time maybe have two or three bottles of Gatorade, an apple, a bottle of water. Um, and if that's all that's in the fridges, one 2.7 cubic inch or cubic foot fridge is more than enough to accommodate uh, those small items for two students. And that counts for the Chantel. Do they typically have uh, like in bedrooms and in the common spaces as well, as opposed to just one for that entire suite? Uh, typically in Deshauna, we, we would have one per bedroom, um, it, depending, uh, even the, the students in the single room might decide, um, instead of even just keeping one in their bedroom to just leave it out in the lobby and the two singles could share that one. Um, but again, it really looks at, at what students need. And we find that, that most people don't occupy, need the space even of the 2.7 cubic feet. Is there a difference between the rooms that you showed on 4th Mara and 5th Mara? No, they're, they're, all, they're all the same in that they're all different. Um, but the, the furniture, the, the way the rooms are, are laid up, um, that classic woodwork and wood floor and, and window panes, those are going to be the same between the two floors. We found that because of student usage, uh, cable is not necessarily provided in the rooms, but in the common spaces. Is that correct? Um, cable is not provided on campus. If you do want cable in your room, the cable is run there, but uh, we partner with Comcast Cable. You would have to call and set up your own account and get your own cable box, but that cable is run to the room. There you go. And, and again, I would say uh, with the computers and the phones, students have Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and all those other digital delivery services. Very few people, if ever, were watching live TV on cable. Can you talk about what people most frequently use the common space TVs for? Um, those uh, are used for uh, sometimes movie nights among a group of friends, uh, make some popcorn and hang out out there. Um, some video game tournaments or, or communal use like that. 
Um, it's really a time that people come together and just share in an experience, uh, watch to those TVs. Um, are there wattage limitations for microwaves that you can bring um, into the Shanto Hall? In Deshano Hall, uh, any consumer grade microwave you get should be fine. Um, don't try to get anything super huge or oversized, but if you're just picking one up off the shelf at the store, that should, shouldn't be any problem. There is takeout in the dining hall. It's not an, an excess, but we had a question about taking food out of the dining hall. Um, normally they do monitor to that to make sure that you're not taking an excess, but yes, people do take food out of the dining hall back to their rooms. You can also get food from the cove to be able to take back to your room as well. And, and I expect actually this semester, most of the food in the dining hall is probably going to be boxed up and to go anyways. Okay. Um, so you'll probably have additional takeout opportunities. Air fryers is air, because now, you know, it seems like a more recent thing, air fryers and Instapots and stuff like that in the residence halls. Um, yeah, if you really want one or you're familiar with using one and you think that, that that's going to be necessary, um, you could bring it. Again, uh, Instapots, air fryers are relatively large and you're going to have to be storing that in your room and taking up space, as well as a lot of the things that you might be cooking in that air fryer or Instapot are already going to be available to you for free in the cove or low dining hall. The main part when we're talking about heat is the exposed heating element Corey was talking about in terms of toasters, um, toaster ovens, pizzazz pizza makers, um, Grills. Hot, hot plates, stuff like that. So that's our main concern when it comes to anything related to cooking appliances. I think at the moment we've reached everything. I'm gonna take a second here and if you want to, you can turn on your camera if you wanna take a group photo. I'll turn it on here. We've got a good number of people here. Some familiar faces I've, I've seen many times. Yep, we did mention as well, no George Foreman grills, because those have the exposed seating elements. All right, so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna take our first group picture. And three, two, one. And I'll go to my second screen here. I know you don't know if you're in the first screen or the second screen, so you just gotta smile twice. We got plenty of people on the second screen here. Three, two, one. All right, then I got my pictures. Let me just double check, see if we have any last minute questions. Um, again, Corey, can you mention maybe the uh, website location for the specifics about um, the dimensions for the residence, uh, residence hall rooms? Yeah, you're gonna wanna go to seatonhill.edu. Uh, up at the top, you'll click the option for uh, housing and dining. And then on the right side of the page, click the option that says residence halls. Um, it will list all the residence halls. Whenever you click on the specific hall you're looking for, it'll open up a page that has all the amenities and dimensions. I'm going to turn it back over then to the slide that we had here at the very end in case anyone would like to refresh or take a screenshot there. Remembering that these are some things that you're not typically going to think of in terms of bringing for a residence hall, but are very important this year that we're thinking of. Yes, and again, I just wanna thank everyone for hanging out with us tonight. Great questions. I hope people feel satisfied. We're, we're really doing our best to uh, move around here and show you all the spaces and let you know what to expect. So we really appreciate your patience and hanging out with us. I'm gonna to go to one last slide here. We had one last question as well about food options in the dining hall. If you haven't been in any of the sessions with Darren, Darren will also be available for our next welcome before the weekend on the uh, Thursday the 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. He can answer all of your low dining hall questions, but yes, there are typically uh, vegan, vegetarian options. Uh, you can work with him and his staff. Uh, as he's mentioned, they really do accommodate our students with needs. Um, regardless of what those needs might be. We, we work with a lot of different allergies. I wanna remind everyone that today's session for our students, um, make sure that your name has been up for the profile. If your name has been not up here while we've been in the Zoom session, please send me a message with your name so that I know to give you credit. Today's session did count for the lay of the land part of your uh, path to shine. So that's one part that you've already completed. Um, upcoming tomorrow, we have a commuter social with Q&A at six o'clock. Wednesday, we have a transfer social with Q&A um, at 7.30. And then Thursday, we have Inclusion on the Hill. Keisha Jimerson, our Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion and International Students, uh, will be there as well as Kimberly Bassey-Cook, 
the Director for Disability Services. Um, they really want to meet with as many students as possible um, to be able to, again, talk about inclusion at Seton Hill. So we encourage all to join us there to have a great discussion, meet some of our student leaders, and talk about inclusion at Seton Hill. And so with that, I will say uh, we will stick around, but otherwise, have a good night, and hopefully we can see you all tomorrow. Corey, do you have anything else to wrap up? No, no, I, I think that was everything. Uh, again, great questions. If anybody has any more specific questions, feel free to email me at ccampbell at seatonhill.edu, and we'll be happy to get back to you and answer any other questions you have. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.